Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I have another point of view haircut for you on one of my friends, Dante. So we just did a men's cut in the salon and I wanted you to check it out. Another camera on the head and uh, we're gonna voice it over. So I hope you guys are enjoying these. Please leave in the comments below if you like the video and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys. All right guys, so we're gonna get started with the haircut on Dante. Um, the cool thing about this is it's, it's a point of view haircut. So I wanna show you, this is a regular guest in the salon and I'm gonna go through some of the key things that I see when I'm cutting hair. It's actually a good way for me to just look at this and say, hey, um, how am I cutting hair and what does it look like from my eyes? So uh, we're gonna start off, I have my wall senior clip clippers. I'm gonna wear clipper over comb. I'm using a YS Park uh, clipper comb. Uh, I love this thing because it's got a, a nice easy handle to it. Uh, it allows, but it's thicker, so it allows me to really work well with the clipper over comb. I like clipper over comb. Um, some of you like scissor over comb, like using clipper guards. Personally, Dante likes a little more texture in his hair and have his hair a little bit longer. So I choose clipper over comb for this because to use a guard that long just doesn't make sense to me. So we're going to work, I'm working diagonal back sections. Um, the cool thing about this is it, uh, it just allows it to be a little bit softer feel uh, as I'm working through. You could work diagonal forward if you want as well. We're working around shapes, so as long as you're taking smaller sections and working through, it's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, but yeah, just working diagonal back. Bending that ear out of the way, I think that's a key factor already. Um, a lot of people will work around the ear, but you really want to make sure you get all those little tiny hairs around the ear uh, as you're working. So just taking small sections. Don't rush through when you're working clipper over comb, scissor over comb, anything, because the, the more you rush, the more you have to go back and fix it. Uh, and you don't want to work that way. So I am wearing a camera on my head. So sometimes it almost like his head's going to leave the screen a little bit. Um, that's adjustment I'm definitely going to make next time uh, so that it's more centered. But when it's on your head, you don't really know what's going on. So it's working through, moving that ear again. And then just work in those tiny sections. I'm beveling the comb back just a little bit slightly uh, just to give it a slight graduation as I work that clipper over comb. And now we're going to work into the back. I've said this quite a few times. I like to start in the front because there's nothing worse than when you finish a male haircut and then you have to go back and fix it uh, because they wanted it a little bit shorter. So determine that length first, then start to work towards the back. Tilt his head down. Keeping control of the guest head is is really a key thing in haircutting. Um, you'll have that guest that wants to move around. I actually had a guest in the salon today that was on her cell phone the entire time. So, you know, it's it's sometimes difficult in salon reality, but just try to keep control of their head, keep it nice and steady. That's going to give you a more successful haircut. So still continuing with that diagonal back. I'm going to pretty much crisscross that into the other uh, side of the head. So... Um, it's almost like we'll end up cross-checking in the back. Now I'm going to clean up. I put the blade. The thing I like about the, the senior, wall senior clipper is that you can adjust the blade length. So I adjust it to the tightest uh, point, and I just clean up the neck hair a little bit. I'm going to go in with the trimmer later, um, you know, but, but that's it. I'm going to section his hair here, parting it over right at the parietal. The only reason I do this, this is not where he parts his hair, but the reason I like to do this is because it's going to allow me just a focal point of where his head curves. So anytime I'm cutting hair, whether it's a woman's hair or a man's hair, I like to, to really just have a point of where the head curves away because that's where I want to build that graduation up to. So we'll start off by layering, working through it. And then once I get towards that parietal ridge area and the bend in the head, then I'm going to slowly start to build a more of a graduation in there. working the same consistent sections, working slow with the clipper. When I first started using a clipper, I would fly through that and I would just kind of work the clipper back and forth very quickly because um, I felt like I was getting it done faster. But really, the more consistent you are with the clipper, the better the haircut's going to be. So just slow down a little bit, work that clipper through the hair, nice and slow. It's kind of like when I was younger, I got paid to mow yards. And I felt like if I put the mower up to the, the highest speed and I was driving around the yard really fast, I would get the job done quicker. And then you realize that you actually do a worse job if you try to go fast. So 
Just slow it down, let the clipper do what it does, and don't rush through it. Dante has a nice ice-cold beverage. <laughs> we serve that in the salon, so I would like to thank him for drinking that while I'm cutting. Uh, but you know what? It's all about the service, so let him stay comfortable. Now, just working through blending into the back. Still working clipper over comb. You can tell we're five minutes into this haircut, and I'm pretty much done with the whole entire sides and back. So, um, you know, clipper over comb is just quick for me. It works well. And that's why I choose it. And then I usually go through and detail it with a scissor over comb technique afterwards just to just to fine tune it a bit. Um, because when you're basically when you're going through with a larger comb, there's certain bends in the head and things that it's going to be too wide to really blend it perfectly. So when you go through with a smaller comb later, you can really fine tune those edges. This is a real testament to how steady I hold my head when I'm cutting hair. It's actually kind of fun when you have a camera on your head and you're cutting hair. Not only does it draw a lot of attention in the salon, but, uh, you know, it keeps your head really steady. <laughs> you're like, you're trying to think about holding a camera on your head and cutting hair at the same time. It's interesting. So we're going to go through, uh, I've pretty much finished this, uh, through the sides. So now I just want to connect. I want to go a little tighter around the hairline and that's just, you know, because that grows out the quickest. So I like to go in just a little closer right around the hairline. Dante is one of our members as well. So basically he pays a certain amount every month and he gets unlimited haircuts. So he comes to see me about every week and a half to two weeks. So that's why you, you'd notice that his haircut's not really that uh, grown out because he's a member. And the thing I like about having members in the salon is this haircut's quick for me to do. And his haircut always looks the same. So um, the one thing about male clientele is that they shouldn't look that different all the time. They shouldn't come in with a mullet and, you know, uh, really long gelled up hair because they've been trying to control it for two weeks. Get them in every couple weeks and you're going to see a, a better result. Now I'm going to go in with a T trimmer. This is a wall trimmer as well. Um, cuts, cuts really well. It's nice and tight to the head. I just like to go through and detail each edge. So you can see there's little random hairs that'll grow around the hairline. So I'll go in with the trimmer and just clean that up and detail around the ears and all of that. Now you'll see a little bit of clipper over comb. That's again, just taking it a little bit tighter um, as I'm cutting through, but just more detail work. It's not, I'm not going to use the trimmer all the way around every edge. Now I sat down on my cutting stool. I personally love this because it puts me eye level to the haircut. Um, I don't know if any of you guys use cutting stools. If you do, um, you know, I, I just, I really prefer it. There, you can, there's only so far you can pump up a chair uh, as you're cutting hair. So this puts you really eye level. The only problem with this is that it dropped my camera down a bit. So um, some of this didn't really, the footage didn't really turn out as well as I would like, but again, you learn and next time I will definitely adjust that camera angle. And you'll see, uh, before I kind of flip the trimmer from being, uh, one way and then flipping it upside down. Um, one way, basically the teeth going at the head, um, is going to just draw the line and then turning it around and making it flat just cleans up the neck and gets it a little bit closer. So um, I like to do it both ways that way. All right, so now you can see that little piece that I picked up, that's right around his crown area. And that's where the graduation was built up from the clipper over comb. So now I'm gonna go in, I'm using the uh, scissor over comb technique to go through um, this is my blacksmith fit, uh, six, I think it's six and a half inch scissor. I love this thing cause it's just such a long blade. So it allows me to scissor over comb really well. So I'll go through each edge, 
scissor over comb it just to blend it in. And then now we're going to work on the top. It's my fun scissor collection. I love collecting scissors because personally, I think there is a, a scissor for everything um, and each type of cut. So I use the Blacksmith Fit 6.5 because it's longer and allows me to scissor over comb better. And then now I, I'm going to grab my Z2, uh, Type Z2, Mizutani scissor, and uh, that's what I'm going to do the top with because it's got a really strong blade. It cuts, it's really sharp. And uh, it's probably the sharpest scissor I've ever used. And so I can go through, but I like to dry the hair and texturize it first. The reason I like to go in with it dry instead of uh, just cutting the top wet is because you can really uh, fan out the hair if you want to just remove a little bit of weight. Like I said, Dante just got his hair cut a week and a half ago, so I don't have to go in with a wet cut and recut it. Uh, what I want to do is just take... Um, my scissor and just go in and point cut, remove a little bit of length, but take out a lot of weight and just add a lot of notches in there. So you'll see as I'm using that point cutting technique, I'm backhanding it. So you can see the steady blade just rests on my finger as I work across. I think this is the perfect view of this. Um, just let that steady blade work across and cut your, your uh, we call it notches. Uh, we talked about that on splitting hairs. Call them notches, call them uh, deep point cutting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we just go through and do a, a really deep point cut just to add some texture to Dante's hair. So as soon as he gets that product in there, and we're going to be using our new Cool Grease products, which is cool because uh, we have them on the shop, uh, shopfsc.com now. But we're going to use the Cool Grease products. I believe we use uh, concrete on Dante just to really add a lot of texture, movement, and everything to his hair. This is a really cool textured haircut. Now you can see my fingers are pretty much following the round of the head. I'm not trying to build up too many weight lines, but because I'm using a point cutting technique, uh, it's not going to be super round uh, when you look at him straight on. So I'm just diffusing that line that would really square off his head instead of just cutting it fully square or fully round. Just really point cutting into it. Still over directing back the front. No guy wants all of his, the front of his hair to be the same length as the back in the middle of it. So just over directing it back gives me a little bit of length to play with in the front. You'll see again, I'm just over directing it back slightly point cutting through. You can see Dante, you know, he's just like all of your clients. He has a calic in the front. So I'm, I'm messing with that as well. That's why I'm not really holding his hair down to cut it because I know it's just going to pop up in the front anyways. So there's no reason to really hold it down and cut it. Just want to hold it where it's going to live and add that texture and take some of that length off. Now it's important as you work through, I, I get that hair off his face. I don't want him to be uncomfortable. Uh, the worst part about a guy getting his hair cut is just the, the loose hairs everywhere. Um, and one more time, we're going to grab that trimmer, clean up, I probably just saw something here that I wanted to detail and clean up. Again, this is point of view haircutting. I do not want to cut this up too much uh, and edit it. I would rather you guys get to see, yeah, get to see my feet. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'd rather you guys get to see a real salon reality haircut um, as I'm working and as I'm thinking through it, I wanted to kind of just document my thoughts on it. So bend the ear, going through using, I, I like the T-trimmer because it hangs over the clipper blade a little bit, so it's easy to get behind the ear. Now, just checking through it. Now, I'm using the Mizutani uh, Acro Yuragi. Um, I think no, I think this is a zero, uh, which basically means it's it's got the most teeth, so it's not going to take out as much hair. But I can go through and just skinny up right around uh, the recession point right there just to add a little bit more texture. And it's also kind of in his calyx. So just right on that weight line. Again, we were talking about how are we going to square it off? Are we going to round it off? This is just going through, adding some texture. You can see how easy that glides through the hair. That's what I really love about this scissor is that it never snags. 
So unless you were doing something wrong, um, I've never had a problem with it snagging or anything. So just going through, sliding through, and taking out some of that bulk. Again, do not use a thinning scissor. I've talked about this before on other videos, but don't use a thinning scissor uh, as a blending scissor. If you have to blend a line, it means you haven't created the right line. So try not to just use it to fix anything. Use it just to add that texture and movement in. All right, the cut looks good, I believe. So I'm talking to him, see what he thinks, if he likes it. I'm going to get that hair out of his face. Now we shampooed him. We always rinse out our guys and we give them a hot towel treatment on their face. So we did that. Now I'm just blow drying him one more time, cleaning him up. I like to put some uh, of the blow dryer in the front of his hair just to pop it up, using that heat to pop it up a little bit. Uh, now we're using the Ruzo product. So Ruzo product is great. Uh, it's a great pomade. It's got a really good hold. I love the green one. Uh, so we're gonna go in there and use that. It'll add shine to his hair some texture. That's what Dante really likes. So we just run it through. I like to start in the back, uh, back parietal area, kind of right around the crown area as well. Start working it in there and then go through the front, then in the sides and just kind of piece it out with texture, twisting my fingers to create that textured movement in there. And then you're going to see right here is where I noticed that he's got this one kind of long piece of hair in his calic area that I know is going to give him a hard time all the time. So I mess with it for a minute. And if it's giving me a hard time, it's definitely going to give him a hard time. So, um, you know, I think a lot of us would be like, all right, let me just put some more product in there and push it up. I personally, if it's not working for me, then I'm going to figure out how to fix it. And I, I decided that I just wanted to blend it in a little bit more and take that piece out. There's no reason to have it that long there if it's just gonna give them a hard time. So I go in and I blend it with my scissor real quick. And then boom, it's done. And it, and it works really well for him. So, you know, just a quick textured haircut. Uh, Dante, you know, he comes in every couple weeks to get this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this haircut. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Leave your comments below. I'd love to know how you felt about the point of view haircuts. If you felt like it helped you, and uh, the last little bit, we're going to clean up his neck underneath the cape. And then we're going to send him on his way. So, again, guys, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for the support. And uh, we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. <laughs>